the end of state education in many ways. They will get rid of national pay and conditions. They will remove parents from governing bodies. And when a school enters a multi-academy trust, that school ceases to exist as a legal entity. The head and the staff of that school will have no influence either. We want schools to remain accountable to the local authorities. We want to be able to elect the governors and the people who run the school. We don't want it taken over by a business who only thinks about profit and not the education of our children. At the moment, we have a lot of support from our local authority and they have got one of the best records of supporting schools to improve in the country. What we're being told now is that we're going to be forced to kind of like remove ourselves from that and I don't really know who's going to, who we're going to be kind of like supported by. I don't know who's going to be kind of running our school. That's the third highest performing borough in the country. And we, are, we don't have any underperforming primary schools in the borough. It's a bit of embarrassment for the DfE because its own analysis shows that only three of the top 20 multi academy trusts have above average pupil attainment. That means 85% of the academy trusts are below the standards in local education authority schools. Primary schools that are rated inadequate by Ofsted are 12 times more likely to remain inadequate if they convert to academy status than if they stay with the local authority. 12 times more likely to remain inadequate. It's because it's completely chaotic, that transfer, so everybody's attention goes somewhere else, the school does not improve. All the successful school systems that are ahead of us in the PISA tables are ones that have a national school system, not a private school system. If they're saying that it's the PISA tables, well, look at the ones that are ahead of us and do what they do, but they're doing the opposite. One, two, three, four, Nicky Morgan knows more. Five, six, seven, eight, organise and demonstrate. One, two, three, four, Nicky Morgan knows more. I'm scared of the lack of accountability that will be happening. I'm scared that they want to get rid of parents on governing boards. It's going to uh, dismantle community feeling because people won't feel as engaged in their schools. It's going to cost a huge amount of money at a time when education funding is in real danger of being cut. Our school's already kind of like trying to kind of find ways to save money and cut, cut staff costs, cut staff. It's a damaging effect on the children and their education. You're taking public funding and giving into private hands. If you think about the people who are actually putting money towards academy, the, seat, the, the owner of Carpet Right, what does he know about education? Uh, one of the CEOs of a big chain of meat pies and sausages. The ownership of the land and the assets will be transferred from the public purse, they'll go to a completely kind of private financial body and the public purse will pay the transfer of the assets, the cost of the transfer of the assets. Shame on you! 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 This policy self-evidently is not about school improvement, it is not about standards in our schools, it is about ideology, it is about their political project. I just moved here from America uh, where I, I'm, we're already further ahead of what uh, UK schools want to do and I, I'm already seeing the results of privatisation. It's, it's what uh, they want to do with healthcare is the same as what they want to do with education. I think this is an international problem that we need to fight uh, internationally. I've seen entire swaths of public schools being shut down and turned into charter schools, which are then run by uh, unaccountable people who decide, um, make all the decisions. No longer do teachers have a say, do parents have a say. In America, teachers are no longer, if they work in academy, are not, most of them are not in unions. So they can get paid and treated uh, really poorly. <laughs> what are Morgan and Gibb doing about the real issues facing parents and schools? The rising teacher shortage, the rising pupil place shortage, the rising class sizes, what are they doing? The curriculum chaos, the chaos in testing, the funding crisis, 
they are doing nothing about the things that really matter to parents and schools and teachers. As educational professionals, we know what our priorities are in our schools. We need adequate funding to ensure the invaluable contributions of every member of every team can continue. We need space and time in our schools to enable our learners to learn in a way that actually benefits them. We need to stop obsessing about meaningless outcomes and to start focusing on the against uh, these proposals with parents, uh, with yourselves, with teachers, with the unions. The government's already failed to convert schools by its own deadline of 2015. They've now extended it to 2020 or 2022. They're already failing in the oversight of all the academies they've already got. So I, I actually don't believe that they've got the resources or the manpower to make this happen. At Hope Park School, we've already had a vigorous campaign that threw out an academy conversion plan in 2014. We had a parent ballot, 71% of parents were against academy conversion at Hope Park School. As far as the head teacher is concerned, that issue is settled at Hope Park School. We've had quite a lot of success. Um, we've taken a deputation to the council, we've got Labour councils coming behind us now, and even our MP. The teachers managed to stop the academy at least until September, so because they were going to strike. The governors and indeed the local council were saying we have to investigate this possibility because they're going to make us all academies, that's what's going to happen. And we said well we can resist it and funnily enough now they've showed their hand and said we want to force all schools to become academies, actually it's firmed up the resistance and now there's this campaign saying no to forced academisation and I think the council, the governors are realising actually this is a very unpopular move, we can resist it, so we hope it's actually She's strengthened our case and they'll get with us and fight academisation. We're up for the fight. This is a fight that we can win. We don't think that this is thought through in any coherent way at all. There's no actual plan for how these schools are going to be switched to academies, how they're going to be run once they are academies. There's no resource being put up to carry out these conversions. The bureaucracy is tremendous. I don't see how the government can actually get this through. So there's everything to fight for. Teachers and doctors unite! for the first time in 40 years decided to take an unprecedented action um, and undertake industrial action um, which was a very very difficult time for us it still is um, and so I'm here today to say we know what it feels like what you're going through and I'm here to reciprocate and reach back out to you guys a hand of support on behalf of all the junior doctors in the country to teach us and the 27th April. Consultants will be looking after patients not a single patient will be put at risk because the most senior, experienced members of the profession will be looking after them. We need to start to unite these struggles. This is about standing up for the kind of services that we want in our society. And I, for one, want equal access to education and healthcare regardless of age, race, income, status, I want it for everyone. If you are pushed and you have to take action like we have, know that 50,000 junior doctors have got your back. 